Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Hello, listeners. Welcome to Business Innovators Radio. This is your host, Constant Taylor. Today, we have a very special guest on the show, and they're going to share some very exciting information with us. So, if you're looking to increase your personal and professional effectiveness, then you've come to the right place. Our special guest today is Rashad Bristow. Rashad has been speaking professionally for over 10 years, and the primary content that he speaks on is self-empowerment, self-esteem, and professionalism and leadership. Rashad has spoken primarily nationally and is based out of Mansfield, Louisiana. His newest book is called Bitter or better, doing more with less. That's a great bio, Rashad. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Now, I'd like to kick off the show by asking you if you can tell the listeners a little bit about your speaking business and how you help your clients. Okay. Uh, a little bit about my speaking business is, first of all, let me tell you a little bit about myself in the process. My speaking business began because I was actually born with one arm. And I was uh, nationally recognized for becoming a police officer to fight my disability. And with that achievement being made and with the media publicity, I started being asked to speak at different locations and different venues. And in this business, one engagement leads to another, thus hence taking me to professional speaking. Okay, awesome. So now, fast forward to today, what are the topics that you speak on and how do you help your clients? The topics I speak on are... Self-esteem, emp- self-empowerment, leadership, professionalism. The way I help my clients is I uh, like to make sure that we're able to tap and understand that everyone goes through struggles in life. These are some of the challenges that we can't uh, avoid. But, however, the way we go through these struggles are the ways that we keep a positive attitude in spite of the negative things that go around us. Uh, to understand that, you know, current conditions are not, not always permanent and they're not always going to be our conclusion. So this is one of the ways I help my clients by helping them to look at the bigger picture as opposed to right then and now, which may not be very positive or maybe negative at that particular time. Okay. Now, how how deep do you get with your clients? Because, you know, level one is telling someone that, hey, you should not think negative. And sometimes that's, you know, like trying to tell a dog, hey, you shouldn't chase a bone. How do you change the mindset so that their thinking it goes from negative to, you know, possibly neutral and then eventually positive? Well, the way that I first look at it is I, I try to get the people to look at the things that work in their favor. There's a scenario that I do where I ask them to uh, write two columns on a sheet of paper, and then they weigh those columns of the people that they know that favor them and the people that they know that do not favor them. And whenever they're dealing with self-esteem issues, say like bullying or something along those lines, oftentimes those columns, the people that favor them, that column always outweighs the column of the people who do not favor them. So then we deal from there. We start looking at all of the people that are support systems. Why do the people favor them? What have they done to encourage them? And and we deal from there. Okay. Uh, Interesting that you mentioned bullies, I have a different perspective and I want to share with you my perspective, not to taint you. And then I'd like to get your perspective on it. When I was coming up, bullies were all around me. They were in school, they were in my neighborhood. And at the time, I didn't fully appreciate them. But as I got older, I I found that those people allowed me to deal with the the business situations, the personal situations that I have today, and had those bullies not been in my life, those obstacles, then I would not know how to deal with these uh, corporate bullies. What, what, what's your take on that? Now, I agree with you 100%. Uh, again, it goes back to attitude and perspective. Bullying, usually when you look at a bully, the bully is always trying to point out that thing about you that looks like it, it could be a kick at the negative thing. But in the process, what it does is, given the right direction, it gives you an opportunity to reassess certain weaknesses in your life where you're able to focus on those weaknesses and start making improvements. That way, we start building ourselves up. That way, the bullying cannot, the bullying does not take quite as much advantage as it primarily would have. Okay. So, no, I, I understand because even with myself, uh, being born with one arm, 
that was some things I knew that I couldn't change that. That was, that was without a doubt. However, the bullying that I encountered was people would tell me what I could not do. Mm-hmm. So what I decided to do was prove them wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, for example, they said that you can't play football, you can't catch a ball. So even though I did not play in high school or college, when I was playing in the neighborhood, I always made my business to try to be the receiver because I wanted to catch the ball to prove those that said, you can't catch the ball, incorrect. That is a very, very inspiring story. I, you know, to, 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 to take something like that and to turn it into an asset. I know another gentleman who has uh, one leg. He was shot in New York in an accident. And this guy became a professional downhill skier with one leg. And he can ski faster than 99% of the folks with, with two legs. So, so, so you're an inspiration to myself and, and to many others out there to show that, hey, you know, just because you don't have one thing does not mean that it's a, it's a negative. So that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much. So what types of people do you look to connect with? What does your, what does your client base look like? My client base, um, big range more so now than, than before. When I initially started this, my initial client base was just the disability community. However, that progressed. And now my client base is uh, corporate America, uh, schools primarily, and colleges. Uh, some of those areas where uh, people find themselves struggling with themselves and try to you know, move forward. Those are a lot of my client base. Uh, schools and colleges and corporate America. In corporate America, a lot of times, uh, I'm dealing with clients who are facing burnout, those who uh, realize that, you know, they've gone as far as they can up the proverbial ladder. They want to venture out and try something about their own initiative. And when it comes down to college and high school students, it's along the same lines, just to see more in you than sometimes people. People usually see more in you than you see in yourself. So my job is to try to amplify what other people see to make that person see it also and move on it. Okay. What are some popular misconceptions about the the work that you perform and the services that you provide and how do you how do you address those? Well a lot of the, the popular misconceptions is when people talk about motivation and empowerment, they feel like it is just for that particular time when you have people emotionally stirred up during the seminar within itself or the presentation within itself. However the thing that I want to do is, that I do do, is I want a person to look at themselves and tap into that inner power. True, so we energize you, but at the same time, we want to put you in a direction where you realize, you know what, this is obtainable. This is something that I can do. Only thing I have to do is just change my mindset and clear these weeds out and start looking at the bigger picture mentally okay. and then moving forward emotionally. Okay, that, that's an excellent point. It's, you know, I, I've heard it put where, okay, we don't exercise one time and then we're done. We don't eat one time and then we're done. So motivation, it's it's an ongoing process where you continuously need to get fed with uh, positive things. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And you have to change your environment in the process. You have to emotionally and mentally charge yourself for it. Um, you know, uh, sometimes what happens is, if we find ourselves that we're the only big fish in the pond and everyone is beneath us, it's time to change farms because we need to find ourselves where we're challenging ourselves to be better. What What is the most inspirational situation that you have faced personally where you have taken an individual or a group from something that was dire in despair and turned it into a very positive situation? Yes. Um, one of the places I used to do a lot of uh, mentoring offline was uh, I used to mentor a lot at the Department of Corrections. So there was this one particular offender who was going through some challenges of trying to reintegrate back into society. So what I began to do was I began to uh, coach this young man in order to understand that changing his environment was one of the biggest things. But the biggest success was I told him 50% of if he recidivates it back into corrections is who he allows to pick him up when he discharges. If he's allowing someone who he knows to have his best interests in hand, 
like his mother or family or someone I love him, then he's already putting himself on the right track. Also, he's allowed someone who he used to run with that weight was a contributing factor to the to the criminal behavior that he had, that was going to be a possibility of recidivism. Well, long story short, fast forwarding, he allowed his brother to pick him up because he had a twin brother, and his brother was always looking out for his best interest. In the process, his brother worked for a car dealership. He started working as a maintenance in the maintenance department and service department, and within three years, he became promoted as a salesman and became the top salesman for an Infinity dealership for three years running. Okay, yeah, that's that's an excellent uh, excellent story and example. Now let's talk about let's talk about leadership. How do you? What principles? do you instill with leadership and how do you help develop that within individuals? The way I develop uh, instilling in leadership is I have people to stop and think about their dreams, their goals. Oftentimes people will not act because they become self-conscious of the people that are around them and they feel that they're going to allow themselves to be discouraged based on telling someone what they want to make the achievement to be. True leadership is realizing that you have to put aside what you believe other people may think and the process, and take the initiative to move forward and do what you do. Not only that, but also understanding that leadership is also being a support system in the process. I always like to use analogy. Sometimes true leadership is not where people see you, but they understand that you are the, the pillar, just like a nail on the wall that's supposed to picture. Many times people talk about that as a beautiful picture, but no one ever talks about the nail that supports the picture. That's what a true leader does. The leader supports and holds things together where people are able to recognize that the bigger picture looks great. Mm. That's an, the nail in the uh, in the wall in the picture. That's an excellent uh, excellent example and a good visualization. Now, now, do you feel? How do you? What's your opinion on leaders born versus created or developed? My opinion is. Everyone has the potential to be a leader. There are some who are born leaders because they just take that initiative, and there are developed leaders. Uh, the developed leaders are the ones that had to put aside that four-letter word that has taken more lives than AIDS have, fear. Hmm. Fear is one of the hindering things that people, that, uh, that the developed leader has to get beyond. See, the born leader has no regard for fear because they understand that I may make the mistake, but I will try again. Uh-huh. Henry Ford was recognized for making the Model T car. Everyone re- remembers the Model T, but no one ever talks about the Model A through S. When you look on any merit time table, there's about 21 opportunities that he missed before he actually made it. Uh, that's what you look at when you look at a born leader, someone who look, realizes that I make the mistake, but I'm still trying until I get it correct. Okay, now with uh, as we wrap up here, is there a message that you would like to convey to the listeners so that if you don't receive anything else today, I want you to get this message? What would that be? I would like to convey that life's experiences will make an individual either one of two ways, either bitter or better. But the bitterness or the betterment will come from looking at the way you look at life. Either have a stumbling block or a stepping stone. With the right attitude, any stumbling block can turn into a stepping stone, and it can improve the life's conditions. The only thing is, is have to stick with it. Very inspirational. Now, if the hey. listeners would like to get in contact with you, learn more about your services, how can they do that? They can reach me at my website, which is www.rashadbristow.net. I spell it as www. R A S H A D B R I S T O dot net. Also, um, they can contact me at 318, area code 318 And if by some chance they hear this and they're not in a position to write, if they just Google one armed police officer, Louisiana, which I'll just so be the name that comes up. Well, Rashad, sincerely, uh, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing that thank very you, inspirational. Man message with us. We really appreciate it, man. Thank you for having me, Mr. Titus. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.